your boy Two Real Four One Four. Y'all locked in for another episode, man. Of really speaking the podcast, man. Um, I need everybody, everybody, man, to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to my channel, man. This channel cannot grow without y'all. I got a lot of people that say, you know, they want me in this space. They want me to, you know what I'm saying? Speak, really speak. So in order for me to do that, I got to get y'all to subscribe. You can't just watch the video, don't subscribe, man. Share it with a friend, whatever it takes, you know what I'm saying, to make this channel grow. I'm really, I'm really into it. Listen. It's 2024, man. I want to say Happy New Year's to everybody, man. How everybody been? How everybody been out here living their life? Uh, everybody got goals. I see everybody pushing, working. It's only been like, we only two weeks in, so, I mean, what I've seen so far is great. Um, me, personally, I brought my New Year's in a little different. You know what I'm saying? I had, um, actually brought my New Year's in at a church. Shout out to Pastor um, Tipton. Uh, I went to church, brought it in in church, and then I left and went to the Boosie and Webby concert. Um, man, speaking of Boosie and Webby, man, shout out to Boosie, man. Um, that man always we put on a great show, like dog be putting on a great show, like no matter what. You know, I appreciate him, man. Um, Big Debbie, I mean Lil Webby, nah, bro, you was out of order when you came up here. He had that big fur on, the gloves on, man. He was tweaking. You know, I know that's Boosie man's, but this is over for bro. Bro, just he thugging at a whole different level. Um, had a great time though, man. Getting some of them throwbacks, listening to some of them great records, and um, it, it was it was it was a pretty much a good year. It was it was a good brought it in the right way. I had a great time. Um, spirit, mind, body, everything where it's supposed to be, and um, yeah. And um, also, man, I want to go to what happened to me this year so far. Um, I was invited out there to the. Um, the PodCon in Philly. Uh, shout out to Wallow. Um, that's my man. Um, I got a chance to finally get Shout a Man to God. You know, sign my book. Shook one. You know, a book I had for several years. Read it when I was in prison. And I uh, finally got a chance to meet him. And uh, chop it up with him, man. He called us the Mean Streets of Milwaukee. You know, that was good. You know what I mean? For him to understand Milwaukee. Not know what's going on in the culture. Um, he, he see what's going on. And he asked about a few rappers down here. I definitely gave some names. And, um, man, I got in these rooms, man, and I got some information, man. I, I tell people all the time, from my understanding, to get in these rooms with these important people, like the CEO of Spotify, the guy who started rap. From my understanding, to get in these rooms with these important people, like the CEO of Spotify, the guy who started Rap Caviar, um, Global head director of um, podcasting, Brian Anderson. Um, what's the lady name? She I forgot her name. She she was like the head of iHeartRadio. When I say I took these, I was aggressively shaking hands. Hey, what you do? What's your name? Man, what's your information? What's your, what's your Instagram? Hey, how can we connect? You know what I'm saying? Are you a person of your word? Can I follow up with you? If I follow up with you, can we follow through? Because one of the most important things about Getting in a room is not getting in a room. It's actually getting in a room and networking. And I got in these rooms and I networking, man. And I, I, I developed a lot of great information about the space I'm in and about the journey I'm on. And, man, I, I really, I really, really loved it. And, um, man, I got a lot of bright spots, things I didn't know, things I did know that was confirmed. And just one thing I did notice, man, about being around all these people that had money and that was millionaires was it was crazy that, Everybody who had money didn't dress like it. Everybody who had paper, they did not dress like they had some money. That's what was the most craziest thing about the whole time I was there. Like, did he worth how many million? Man, look what this. And what I realized is, the more money people make, the less they want to be seen as money. And it's like with us, the more money we make. We want people to think we got more money than we got. So I never been big on that. Everybody that know me, never follow me. You gonna catch me with my stuff on. Hey, check this out, merch. I got the merchandise available. I got the link in my bio. I'm gonna put the link down here below in the description. You gotta type in, hey, check this out, boss.com. You get all my merch. Like I'm big on wearing my own designer, wearing my own clothes. So 
it's just learning that and seeing that from a dynamic of like, dang, these people really, 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 really smart with their paper. So, man, I had a great time at that. Um, 2024, man, it's the year. Um, as we know, Cat Williams, he set the internet off. That was like the highlight of the year. Um, shout out to Club Shay, Shay and Shannon, them. They did their thing down there. And um, it was it was it was a great interview. A lot of gems dropped. A lot of you know what I'm saying game. A lot of things that I peeped. And um, it, it was, that was that was great. Um, I know a lot of people want me to speak on the Young Dolph and um, Big Juke situation, but me personally, I just only thing I can say is I send my condolences to both of the families because what I truly know, being from the streets, is um, if Dolph one did, Juke one be dead. And I just I just know that to be true. And um, y'all just don't know, like, if Dolph, if Dolph one did and Gotti and them could have, you know, possibly sit down and resolve this, if this resolve whatever they had going on, a lot of people would still be alive. And um, it's just unfortunate how many kids ain't going to see their fathers and how many families ain't going to be able to see their brothers and sisters behind this. So, man, my condolences to Big Juke, the CMG family, um, Dolph, everybody. I'm staying mutual because that's Memphis business. I'm going to let them handle that. So I want to get to uh, some of my interesting uh, topics and shit. It's a lot of women, right? It's a lot of women out here that really think that, like, dudes out here, like, really want you for you. Baby, let me give y'all some free games. When you a baddie and you were up top, you on a lot of niggas' lists. You on a lot of niggas' list. And when I when I tell you you on niggas' list, they hit list, a nigga will say whatever and do whatever to get you off his list. It's easy to get a nigga to fuck on you, but it's hard to get a nigga to fuck with you how he supposed to fuck with you. Let me say that again, baby. It's easy to get a nigga to fuck on you, but it's hard to get a nigga to fuck with you how you want him to fuck with you. Because most of these niggas got you on a list, baby. You on a lot of niggas' list. These niggas out here plotting on your pussy. Yeah, these niggas out here plotting on that pussy. So why you thinking you, all this attention is warranted and you just this... Baby, you on a nigga list. And the minute he gets you off his list, you're going to see that nigga going to act different. He going to act funny. Because I be laughing at women when they be thinking like, you just know, baby, you on niggas list. It's like a real hit list out here. That niggas be like, man, I want to hit her. I want to get her. And once a nigga get you off his list, he calling his own voice. So you got to be smart to decipher and understand, like, do a nigga really like me or do a nigga just want to get me off his list? And how can you determine that? You determine that by conversation, what he on, you know what I'm saying, how he come at you, you know what I'm saying? Because that's just, to me, that's just big, you know what I'm saying? Like, I see that a lot, like, you know what I'm saying? And, and niggas got to stop being so thirsty. Like, the problem I be seeing is this, boss, when you dealing with a bad, a baddie, Bro, you got to think what she done been through. Bro, she got multiple niggas in her inbox thirsty. She got um, she got niggas sending her all kind of freaky ass dick pictures saying they eat her pussy, all that weird ass creepy shit, right? So you got to have a whole different approach with a baddie, boss. You got to take your time. I mean, you got to really get to know somebody and not appear thirsty. All that, dude, you got to think about this. What she been through. The number one job of a man is to make sure a woman is comfortable. Make sure she is in a safe place and she's protected. Them are like the top three priorities as a man when you're dealing with a woman. Because if you make a woman feel safe, protected, and comfortable, then you would get the best version of her. You ever had a shorty come over your crib and she been in there 20, 30 minutes. She still got her coat on and her shoes. She ain't took off her coat, her shoes, or her coat. Oh, boy, she done already fucked up. That's why I tell, that's why you got to know when women come over your crib and they got a female with them, my nigga, this is her escape goat. This is the woman that she going to be like, girl, when he get on some bull, this for you to do the go. Because that's what they really, that's what they do. Like, I got to have my own girl with me because a nigga, a lot of niggas be doing weird shit, my nigga. And I get it. A lot of y'all just be trying to, niggas be trying to smash and dash and I get it. But then with hoes and bitches, with women, you got to really take your time and assess the situation. You know what I'm saying? Don't appear so thirsty. A woman respect a man that can got dick discipline. A lot of niggas ain't got no discipline with their dick. So a woman, most women love that about a man. Like, oh, he got discipline. He can really chill with me, hang out with me for a few weeks, 
take me out on a couple of dates, chop it up with me, get to know me and understand me as a person, then that's how you know that's your person because what I'm learning is we done took the friendships out of relationships. We done took the friendships out of relationships and now it's just nothing but relations. It ain't even a relationship. Nobody wants to be your friend no more. Nobody wants to build no more. They don't want to build friendships. They don't want to get to know each other no more. So I get this all the time. A lot of women be like, um, why you ain't married? Why you ain't got no wife? You always wait. You deserve it. I said, listen, baby. We living in a transaction era of dating. This is a transaction. What I mean is a transaction. I have to pay for a service. I am not paying for anything. When I first meet you, how was you doing this before I met you? That's how you're going to continue to do it until I get to know you. Real men take care of a woman. We look out for a woman. You mean to tell me every date I go on, I got to pay a, a bill or some bills? Man, it's a transaction error. Why you think why you, why you think most of these rich basketball players and everybody is dating the same pool of women? Only fans, strippers, porno stars. Instagram models and all these group of individuals. This is a transaction era of women They got so many sucker ass niggas paying them for their time To where when a real man approach her She don't even want to deal with him because he's gonna do it the regular way when you court a woman Women always been simple hoes are not these this transaction era of women them them ain't women them hoes these bitches are Pure prostitutes, them hoes. Real women will let you court them. You can take them out to a date, a movie. They want to wear they, they will tell you. A woman, that, a real woman, when you go to the movie, she's going to tell you to stop at Walgreens and let's buy the candy. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's get in here. It's too, it's too expensive at the... Uh, these new women, man, they need to tell you to take them home if you stop at a Dollar Tree and go get a whole bunch of candy. So, my thing is, it's a transaction era of women that... Men have made it so cool because they got a lot of money now that they can just pay. A lot of niggas ain't got no game. They don't have conversation. Conversation always rules the nation. You know what I'm saying? I've been the type of nigga I could talk a bitch out of her panties. That's been me my whole life. I ain't never had to pay flat out. You know what I'm saying? What? I got to pay a bill to be in your presence? Is you serious? I know real women that when we get to know each other, they be like, what you doing? Now, let's go out for drinks. And she take care of the tab, boss. She ain't inviting me out and tell me I got to pay. Because where I come from, you're not my woman. And we just friends and we, we dating or we kicking it. Whoever invite, whoever out pays, boss. If I invite you out, I pay. If you invite me out, you taking care of the tab. So the, 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 the way the era, the pool of dating is horrible right now. And a lot of people don't want to build in private no more. Everybody want to use somebody for their own personal agenda to create their own motion. Like, you got men and women dating people because they popular and got a name. Because they trying to lift their status up. Everybody trying to lift their resume up, lift their followers up, lift their status up. And I'm big on dating private, so you would never know who I'm messing with because I'm private to the core of me. I done had a social media page for 15 years. I have never went public once. And I'd have had a few relationships. So that's one of the main reasons why it is what it is with me. And um, people don't really take the time out to get to know each other. People too quick to judge. Um, people living in this, this this fantasy world where it's just all excitement for them. Everybody wants to be turned. Everybody wants to be lit. Nobody wants to come down. So when people come down to reality, they got to deal with the world and life because everybody trying to escape some realities that they really got to live in. Somebody that's more like, no, nah, I ain't on that. I'm on this. I'm a, it's boring to them. You know, everybody looking for excitement. They living for the next thing. It's like the drug. You chasing that high. You chasing that fix. So until I find somebody that meets my core values and understand where I'm going and where I'm moving and it aligns with what I'm trying to do and what she's trying to do in life align with where I see myself going, then that's what I'll connect. But until then, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep doing me because at the end of the day, you never know like when your king or your queen can come. So why not have your board clear with a lane for them to come straight to you 
instead of having all this mess going on. Because the problem is everybody just fucking with people just to be fucking with people because they can't be alone. There's so many women out here that can't be alone. And I don't know why. Like, they just can't be by themselves. And that's the real crazy thing. Like, they really can't be by themselves. And I don't really know why. Crazy. Hey, it's crazy, right? Like, so I get this all the time. They, it's this thing floating around about who cheat more, men or women, right? So, my thing is this. This this is my question to anybody, right, that, that, that says who cheats more, right? Let me ask you this. Think about this. Think about this one time. How many times in your life have you seen two dogs fucking? Like, how many times in your life have you actually seen two dogs outside, in the gate, anywhere fucking? I would say I've seen, I seen dogs stuck after they was fucking probably like 10 times in my life. I ask yourself this. How many times you seen two cats? How many times have you seen two cats having sex? Me, I have never seen. That's your answer right there. Women are better cheaters. Men are horrible at it. We live in an apartment complex and we will mess with the girl upstairs from us. A woman smart, she gonna go across that town, boss. She ain't gonna be no dummy. She gonna have that work boyfriend. She gonna bust a move. Your woman can go somewhere to the, say she going to the grocery store and say travel's backed up and stop somewhere and get her rocks off real fast. Come home and get in the shower right in your face. You won't think nothing of it. Like she had purpose to get out the car and fall in the snow that got a little mud on it. Come in the house like, oh, babe, ugh. I got to get in the shower. <laughs> so it's like women are always way been better at cheating and they cheat more. And if they and if you knew how much women cheat, you probably, you probably wouldn't stay with her. Because ain't no such thing as, because niggas be thinking they players like, shit, my girl know what I do, Ooh. Yeah, you yeah, she know what you do, but you don't know what she do. So that's just like, that's one thing that I always realize. Man, it's one thing I want to get into, man. Y'all know I'm an NBA fan. I'm kind of disappointed in my Lakers. My Lakers ain't doing good right now. They 20 and 21. They one game under 500 in the same position they was last year. I don't know what they're going to do. Um, the Bucks, the Bucks looking okay. They're not looking great to me. Um. If anybody seen that game winning shot, when Dame hit that shot, Brooke Lopez was not happy. He asked for the ball when he made the shot. Instead of celebrating with him, he walked off. If you pay attention, go back and look. Dame hit the shot. Right before he hit the shot, Brooke passing the ball. He ran. You see Brooke Lopez doing this in slow motion. And then he hit the shot. Everybody run over there and celebrate him except Brooke. So it's some turmoil going on in that locker room, man. And I, I just, I know, like, the head coach, something going on in that locker room. Somebody ain't happy. And I, I think everybody was so worried about Dame and Giannis meshing, but they forgot that. What about the other players like Mil Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez? So it's some stuff going on in that locker room. I mean, right now, I would hate to say this, but... If the Clippers stay healthy, they definitely, definitely will be in the mix this year. Um, on that East Coast, man, Boston looking great. It's looking like it's either a Boston. It's a three-headed monster between Boston, Milwaukee, and um, Philly. And um, I know y'all might not want to hear this because I'm from Milwaukee. Um, we don't want to face Pacers in the playoffs because right now they got our number. That could change. And um, I just – I just uh, – I just realized that. And, yeah, on top of that, y'all Packer fan. Oh, my God. I was so happy to see what y'all did to the Cowboys. Oh, my God. I, I love y'all sent them Cowgirls home. You know how bad it is to watch a delusional fan base for almost 30 years, thinking every year is their year? Man, that was our Super Bowl. All Green Bay Packers. I know y'all feel great. Um, they got a punch of chance against 49ers. I'm hoping that it turn out to be what it is, but as of now, I don't know. Um, to be determined, to be seen. Um, definitely, um, definitely looking to see how the NBA gonna turn out. I mean, my, if I used to ask me what my picks would be right now, it could change. But right now, I see Boston coming out the East, and I see Denver. A puncher chance could be 
maybe, 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 just maybe Clippers. Because I don't think Minnesota, even though they're number one seed, I don't think they're a big enough threat to go all the way. Um, OKC, they great, but they young. I don't, I don't, um, Shea Gill, Alexander, he great player. Um, Williams, all of them, some good young players, but they say young people, young players in the playoffs don't perform well, so we're going to see how that go, man. Definitely going to see how that go. So, look. I wanted to talk about something, but I ain't really know, like, how to really bring it to forth. Because, um, it seemed like the further someone climb, right, and you try to evolve in life, it always seems like it's it's people from your past, like, just trying to, like, set you back and bring you back down, right? And, uh, my guy Blue said some real stuff on my live, probably, like, earlier, about an hour ago. He said, uh, don't let people that's going nowhere take you with them. <laughs> And when he said that, I thought about that real hard because sometimes when people be people you loved or once loved or once had in relationships with, they ain't going nowhere. And um, I noticed the further I climb, you know, you got people, I got people that ain't been around me in over a decade speaking on the person that I don't even know no more. I can't even identify with that person no more. And um, you got to have tough skin when you're trying to evolve in life because you got to mix the good with the bad because there's some people that they're not going to be happy for what you're doing. They're not going to be happy for how you out here rotating. That's just life. Like, why would they be happy for you? Like, think about it. Like, you're doing something that they actually never thought they could see you doing or never thought that you would actually take the steps to actually do it, and that's the change. And I tell people all the time, once God has forgiven me for the mistakes I made, I would not, I would not let you hold me to him. Once God has forgiven me for the mistakes I have made, I will not let you hold me to him. That's just me. I've been forgiven already. My God has forgiven me. And sometimes people be like, bro, you need to tell your side of the story. I'm like, I ain't got to tell my side of the story. Time will. My blessings are telling the side for me. I ain't got to speak on that. I'd be more, I'd be more aware of the people that actually pay it, that, that actually know of me or know me. I watch what they respond to me. I watch how people that say they know me. I see how they respond because that's what's important to me because right now um, I have never lost anything in my life and sometimes people on the side of loved one outside of somebody dying everything that left me was addition by subtraction everything that left me in my life was addition by subtraction by you leaving it added more value to what I was doing so everything was addition by subtraction and I'm, and I'm happy that people have that Eliminated itself, eliminated itself out of my life because I needed that. Because I didn't never, ever, ever want to be the same person um, that I was in my 20s, in my 30s. The same person I was in my 30s, in my 40s. Life is about evolving. We got to grow. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it'd be hard to grow because like people like me, we never had a lot of good examples. You know what I'm saying? My examples ain't nothing but street legends. People I looked up to, I looked at as heroes. So now my thing is about unlearning because everybody be like you got to learn this you got to learn that which is true but I, I say this before you learn anything the biggest failures in life is what you fail to unlearn you got to unlearn stuff first because once you unlearn it then you will be able to have room to learn because what end up happening is when you don't unlearn things and you learn new things you mix what you learned with what you should have unlearned and that's how people still be mischievous they still be manipulative they still try to finesse because they still have them same ways, the things that they learned, and they try to mix the new way they learned, which is the right way, with the wrong way. And that's why people keep making the wrong turn in life. So I'm not perfect. I never came on this internet saying I was perfect. I always came on the internet and basically try to tell people every day, like, you could be great again. No matter what you've been through in life, you could be great again. You've been in jail, you could be great again. You had them bad relationships with the women, you could be great again. You know what I'm saying? Like, you done lost your house, you can be great again. You used to be out here stealing, you can be great again. You used to be robbing, you was great again. You sold drugs, you can be great again. Can't nobody tell you, you can't be great again. America is the home of second chances. Everybody deserves a second chance. And some people get a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance. Who is you to tell somebody what chance they don't deserve? I never try to 
ever painted the picture that I was perfect. I actually said I was imperfect in so many ways to where it was like, I tell people what I've been through. I don't sugarcoat. I don't make things look pretty. 90% of the things I'm talking to y'all about I actually been through, and I was that person. I was a person that I didn't, I don't want to identify with. I don't even want to remember. But at the end of the day, I got to understand that through this life we call, through this journey we go through, we're going to make mistakes and we're going to do things that we're not necessarily proud of, but it made us who we is. See, I'm coming into a whole different chapter in my life now. So anybody from my past who's saying things and he was used to be this or he don't do this, that, these people are talking about 10 plus years ago. In the last seven years of my life, man, I've been on evolving trains, evolving from all the bull. My perspective has changed. The way I view things has changed. They wouldn't know that. They haven't sit down and talked to me. And if they would, they wouldn't even listen with an open ear. They would listen with a with a hateful ear. Because you got a lot of miserable people. Like, I, it's, 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 it's a woman. She like my biggest troll ever. I ain't dealt with that woman in 13 years. You ain't found no happiness yet, baby. You ain't happy yet. I dealt with a woman in 2004 to 06, two years. She knows she is. I could say I did that. I did her the, the, the worst out of any woman I ever did something to. And guess what? 20 years later, that woman got married. She on the house. She done been to the army, did services. She seen me in a mall like a year ago. And she just smiled. She gave me the smile and kept walking. She has never said one bad thing about me. Her family still see me and speak. That's how I know she did. If she would have told her family what I did back then, she, they probably would never speak to me. So I could tell the difference between a person that moved on. And this happened when I was 18, 17 years old. I was a kid. To a person that's just miserable and their life ain't nothing. Like, so I, I just be looking at people like, look, I am not perfect. I have made mistakes. I'm going to continue to be who I am. I'm not going to feel no type of way about my past. I pray for everybody. Haters. Um, I pray for a lot of people. You will, you'll be shocked because at the end of the day, I don't wish harm on nobody's spirit because at the end of the day, I'm not perfect and I've been through stuff and I done felt that vibe. I understand how people feel about certain things, but overall, man, look, I ain't never came on the internet like I'm a perfect person. I came on the internet letting people know like you can be great again. No matter what you've been through, you can be great again. No matter, I don't care what it is you felt, you can get up, you can be great again. Because a lot of people want to make you think once you make a mistake, that's just who you is and that defines you. I'm here to rebuke that. Believe that. Man. So I was in Philly, right? I want to talk about my experience in Philly. First of all, Philly looked like New York City. It's so small. The blocks were small. Um, the people had that New York accent. Um, the women that I seen, I didn't get the chance to see a lot of women, but um, it's a ghetto everywhere. That's what I can say. Um, but the love Wallow got out there, man. He had three thousand people lined up around the corner, like Drake was out there. And I swear to God, bro, that was like one of the most. That was one of the most powerful things I ever seen. A culture changer, man. That's really trying to set a precedence for the world and people of his color, his race, and come from his background. And man, I can't tell you how much proud of I am to watch this man turn pain to be the poster child for turning pain into power. He's a powerful man in Philly, and he's loved around the world. And that man believes in everything I do, and that just that encouraged me, and it definitely makes me feel great. So, man, while I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm real grateful for you, man, and I appreciate you. Man, it's always going to be some real love. But yeah, man, listen. Really speaking of podcasts, man, I really I really like that I can sit down and have an intimate conversation with y'all and y'all don't judge me. Y'all y'all listen to me, y'all understand me, and it's just it feel good, you know what I'm saying? I want y'all feedback. Like I really want y'all to interact in the comment section because I'm going to be the person I'm going to be listening, I'm going to be reading, and I'm going to be responding. Like I'm going to definitely make I'm going to I'm going to definitely make videos and respond to all y'all comments. Just want to get y'all insight on things that I spoke on, things that I was thinking about. And, man, we could just go from there because the, the whole number one motive for me is to 
vent to y'all, let y'all know how I feel, my viewpoints, and y'all give me feedback because that's the only way this thing can grow because I am not nobody without y'all. Y'all the reason I got all the millions of views on my videos on Instagram. Y'all the reason why I'm taking this serious. Y'all pushing me. Y'all constantly, constantly motivating me. Everybody that DM me, that inbox me, to stop me in the streets, y'all the reason why I'm sitting here today taking this serious and trying to be more consistent with this. So I appreciate y'all, and I'm going to try to make sure y'all always, always leave me a comment. I don't care if it's just a thank you, what up, something, so I can just know that I'm doing this for the right reasons. We done.